Are we? We're live. Okay. All right. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the 8:35 meeting underway. Will the clerk please call the roll? Bell. Here. Curran. Here. Freely. Present. Harrison. Here. Hinkleman. Here. Majeric. Meeks. Scott. Here. Fallrath. Present. Werfel. Here. Yarborough. Present. Elliot. Here. Mr. Chair, you have 10 present, two absent. Any changes to the minutes from the Committee of the Whole for last week? If not, uh, I make a motion. moved by Freeling, supported by Volrath to approve the minutes as submitted by the clerk. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Are we going to do requisitions now or yeah. later? Okay. Does anybody have any questions on the requisitions? Okay, Brian. All right, so as a follow up, uh, just a few weeks ago, we had Abin Marsh in the room. Uh, Tony at that time, uh, Tony McGee, walked uh, the board through the initial findings of their building and uh, facilities assessment. Uh, for today, both Tony and Dirk from Abin Marsh will be walking you through the remainder of the study. My hope, my goal today is for uh, the board to be engaged in understanding what types of challenges we are facing with our buildings and any questions that you have. This is intended to be a very lengthy committee of the whole to allow the board to ask any questions on what investments would make sense. This is gonna be uh, the quick pep talk and it's the, uh, the ticking time clock. We have roughly two years to get the ARPA funds committed, to be uh, ready to spend down those, those dollars. And my hope is to make very significant investments back into the buildings. So for today, I would ask you just really start thinking about what you're seeing and thinking about what we can be doing as staff to help the board to be ready to commit to the, um, the improvements to the buildings and the spend down of the ARPA funds. Uh, Jim Pettinger is in the room. Jim has been uh, keeping an eye on this, this process. Jim is ready, willing, and able to present the strategic plan with a tie bar to this report. So with that said, we have a lot to get through. The, um, uh, the facilities master plan is in front of each of the commissioners. Uh, within hopefully a day, we will have this information up and posted onto the county's website. And then... Um, it'll be available to any member of the public that is curious. <clears throat> Mr. Chair, if you're ready, we have a lot to get through and I will uh, move myself back so I can observe the screen. All right. Thank anybody, you very much. Anybody have anything before we get rolling? Okay, very good. All right, thank you very much. Nice to see everybody again. Uh, what you have before you is, is basically last time's document with additional information in, added into it, uh, just so we didn't have to struggle today. By the way, my office hasn't put in their new order for paper today, so buy Georgia Pacific stock if you can right now, because it's about to go up after 208 pages here. Um, so we're going to move around a little bit, but we're, we're going to start on uh, page 11, and that is where we are at for the, um, pardon me, the public safety and court system. The buildings that we went over last time are the, the gray. Uh, the buildings we're going to talk about today are the darker color font there. So animal control, empire, the training facility, legal aid, and the narcotics unit. We'll go through those today. Then we'll move through the rest of the buildings we didn't. After we talk to the buildings, we actually have an analysis of all the overall cost for all the buildings together by operating area. And then some kind of initial projects you might want to think about with the ARPA money. And then some stuff moving forward to kind of tell you what all will be next. So with that, I will skip over to Animal Control Building, which is on page 55 in your packets. And I apologize. Feel free to move that binder clip wherever you want on there. But when there's this many of them and they are that thick, you pull the binder clips on the left-hand side, the left-hand side, and so it's about this tall, the right-hand side about that tall, and I'm carrying them. So animal control, the new complex, as you remember, we talked about the old one, the conditions, and we recommended demol demolishing it. <clears throat> the new one that was just built back in 2015 over on Euclid, it's on part of that 26.6 acres we're talking about for uh, some campus-type development opportunities. Um, it was built in 2015. It contains two buildings. 
Uh, it's a metal building with a CMU block wall separating it in the middle. Um, overall, this building's in really good shape. It was well constructed. And just next few pages kind of give you some of the existing conditions on it. Some of the, if we go to page 58, uh, the short term needs on the building are very minimal. Uh, leaking PVC pipe uh, needs to be repaired. Uh, water penetration and a windowsill causing some gypsum board to be dealt with. Um, uh, and there were really no security issues. There's nothing we would expect to see with a building of this vintage, given that it's, you know, six years old, just some um, ongoing typical maintenance issues that develop over time as buildings contract and expand. And, and so nothing really overly concerning here. Uh, it needs about $41,000 worth of work here in the next uh, five years. Uh, over the next 15 years, that building, because it is so new, is going to need about like $469,000, and that's with that inflation factor going on at 5% per year uh, over the next 15 years. That compares to $1.2 to $1.5 million if you had to build this facility. Build. So obviously the numbers on this one, it's very clear. It makes us keep making these investments that have been identified up here, and your building's going to be just as good 15 years from now as it is today. All right, the screen and the here and there move different. I've got that now. So, um, I have a question. yes, Manuel. I'm not familiar with the operation of the building. Does it work now for what they have? Yeah. Sir, we're here. We're here. Commissioner Jarbaugh, great question. Uh, and I'm going to get to it later. We actually met at the staff meeting this week with staff to kick off the space and needs analysis portion of this project which we completed in 10 weeks from now. So that is one of the things we will be addressing in this next phase of this project is, what are the needs of the facility from a space and operating standpoint? So I will be able to answer that question for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. 2100 Empire facility. I remember when this was, before it was the county, it was available for sale way back when. So over around Empire, we all know where the building is, built 1980. Uh, just shy of 73,000 square feet on 6.3 acres. Uh, there's about 10 different operating areas in there. So you've got emergency operations, 911, some stuff for county records, print shop, vehicle storage, forensic slabs. There's a little bit of everything in there. It seems to be kind of a catch all operating building where you got some space, it's a big old building. So you got space to do things if you don't have room anywhere else. Uh, it's a well used building. There's lots of stuff going on there. It's the point. Just some existing conditions photos. Um, short term needs on that site. It, it, if you saw the picture before, there with the outside, uh, the asphalt at that building's gotten pretty bad. That parking lot is starting to heave and buckle. That needs to be replaced. Uh, on the, uh, the garage building, the driving exterior wall has holes and tears, needs to be done. Uh, there's several steel doors that require re repainting new sills. Uh, it's a carpet floor finishes throughout the building. Uh, not a ton of stuff, but there's some initial stuff that really do needed there. If this operations are to stay here, they're going to need some investment. There are some safety and security issues on this building. Um, the gate operating system is malfunctioning, needs to be replaced. Uh, window door windows, the exterior requires security film. Knox box needs to be relocated. Uh, camera motion detect detection should be added around the building. Um, and, and a second overhead door for this better egress and ingress should be added on the uh, south end of the warehouse there on the east side. So those are kind of nothing huge, but those are the recommendations from safety and security that were identified during the building evaluation. What does that look like over time? Uh, that building, based on what was seen during the evaluation, is going to need about $1.1 million worth of investment in the next five years followed by 370,000 and another million in the five year cycle after that. So you're looking at a, a $2.5 million investment that building's gonna need us to stay operating for the next 15 years in the manner it is now. Um, that doesn't buy you any enhanced operations. That just kind of keeps everything as it is and functioning. But that is compared to a 5.3 to $5.7 million new building investment. So, you know, it's a pretty significant difference. Does anybody have any questions on the uh, Empire building? Okay. Yeah. Uh, the training facility over at Angley Roman Coloma that was built in 2007, 3,800 square building on a 67 acre building out, uh, property out there. Uh, it's a slab building. Uh, there's a, there's a uh, 
security fence around, obviously the shooting range is our office. That's we got a fence on that. Uh, overall facility is pretty good shape. It's well maintained. As you can see, it's pretty typical for the uses that we would see in a facility like that. Uh, most of the issues on this one are really minor. Uh, the one thing we did notice when we were out there, it's an all ground parking lot. You have no EADA parking out there. That doesn't mean you need to asphalt the entire parking lot, but you should pour a concrete pad with a couple spaces that are ADA inside. Just because if you have somebody with special needs out there, they'd be able to park easily and be able to get it out of the car. Not a huge issue. Um, I necessarily wouldn't recommend paving all the rest of that lot just because of how that facility is used, but we would recommend adding uh, a, a parking lot there. Uh, the shingle roof uh, has some raised shingles, needs to be repaired, but there's no other safety and security issues out there. I mean, if I'm going to go attack a facility and try to cause problems, that's probably not the facility I'm going to go to. So it's kind of a Darwinian approach probably to people. Uh, kind of some of the needs out there, the next five years, and this is mainly around addressing some of the shingle issues and some of the parking lot stuff. Uh, you're looking at about $173,000 worth of work, and that's if you pave the whole lot. You can go either way on that. We went a little more conservative on that, but you get away with a minimum just doing those concrete pads, like I said, for a handicap. I know 30000 the six, 10 years after that, and 270000 in the out five-year cycle. So really, over the next 15 years, that, that building's going to need about $475,000 of work. If you don't pave the whole lot, you can get that down you know, close to that $400,000 level over that 15 years. Uh, but all in all, the, the facility's in pretty good shape. Uh, just keep maintaining it. Don't let that roof go too long because the shingles start raising, water starts getting in there, and then a roof issue becomes a ceiling issue, becomes a wall issue, and that just gets more expensive. Yes, sir. Facility. You guys have any questions on the training facility? Hey, Tony, just yeah. go back to that last slide. Yeah. Um, I just want to make a note that you'll, you'll see uh, kind of a pattern in some of the uh, estimates in 1 to 5, 6 to 10, 11 to 15. And the number goes up on 11 to 15 because when you get to that 15 year old on a lot of these buildings, um, that's when you have to kind of repeat some of the things that you're doing now. So you see kind of an initial expense, and then in about 15 years, that's, that seems to be the drop-off point where materials and finishes and stuff get picked up and banged. You know, have replaced shingles are 15 to 20 years, metal buildings are 20 years. So that's a pattern you're going to see in a lot of these estimates. Thanks, sir. That's a great point. That's why you see that big bump up in the inflation and some of that stuff there. Um, and then when we do the replacement cost, that's in current dollars. So you take 20 years out, put an escalator back around that replacement cost. So Lee Lade building. This is a cool little building that I've always loved. Sitting over there on Port on Port Street, located between the county courthouse and the county jail. Uh, 1,400 square foot building, wood frame, brick good near on it. Uh, Legal Aid of West Michigan's in there. Just some exterior shots of the building. Some interior shots. Well, you're going to see a lot of the issues on this building. It's mainly ADA issues we need to have here that we need to deal with. Rear deer hardware is not ADA accessible, requires upgrade. <clears throat> on the building itself, the windows need to be replaced or repaired. Different ones vary in approaches to it. Uh, the interior door hardware is not ADA and requires upgrades. Uh, the, the current Russian layout fixtures don't meet ADA. And the rear entry hall uh, doesn't meet ADA. Uh, at the basement level, the, the stairway coming in is code, uh, and, the, and the basement wall should be coated with some waterproofing. So, not a ton of stuff there. It's mainly ADA and accessibility compliance issues. Physically, the building's in pretty good shape for the age and use. Well, uh, where does the stairway have to be um, I believe it was in, I'll have to look at my notes, but I believe it was with the dimensions. Of the stair itself. It's the tread and risers, correct. That's exactly it. The tread and risers don't meet code. I remember looking at that last slide. I was like, yeah, I think. No, 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 no. Yeah. Eagle. 
storage. This and how a lot of here and stuff. Yeah, storage. All of those things. Okay. That's the area. Of, we don't know where to put it, so let's put it down there. You know what I wonder to do, make it ADA. Is it a lot of money? We're going to get to that right now, Commissioner. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I love the way you prompt me. I really appreciate it. It makes it a lot easier for me. Uh, a few minor safety and security issues. For 30 years. Yeah. Um, you're, we need to do something to close and create a designated waiting area because right now you come to that building, go right back through. There's no real gateway controls. You come into the building. Mm -hmm. uh, as you can imagine, people involved in the legal system can sometimes not always have the best of intense or spirits as they're dealing with certain things. Uh, some uh, new lighting, e-lights at the exit doors, emergency exit and uh, exit lights. And then railing at the barrier-free ramp right now doesn't meet code, so that railing should be replaced as well. <clears throat> so to address all those ADA issues and some of the code compliance stuff, you're in some of the other stuff we identified, about 81500 in the next five years. You're going to keep using that bill. That's probably something we should do you know, sooner rather than later. <clears throat> After that's not too bad. Uh, Almost 18,000 the out middle cycle, and then 45,000 years 11, 15, 145,000 over the next 15 years. Uh, I know I say only, but relative to building a building or it's not the worst in the world. Um, that compares to 370 to 400 thousand dollars in current dollars if you have to replace that building. So, as usual, it's usually cheaper to keep a building up and to build a new one. Does anybody have questions on legal aid? So the narcotics unit uh, over on Napier as well, built 1999 on a 26.5 acre property, 9,000 square feet pre-engineered steel building, slab on grade. Um, I don't really have a good picture of the facility just because it's a steel frame pre-engineered building. So that's what you get. Just some exterior shots. It's a great shot of the utility sink. It's functioning really well. Uh, mechanicals are typical for the facility. Uh, short term needs, the exterior metal wall panels are done in multiple areas, uh, creates a kind of an the appearance isn't the best. Uh, also, it, it creates potential, those creases become openings, allow water into the building. Um, southeast and east service doors show signs of a proper flash at the head, um, allowing water to infiltrate. A lot of what I'm talking about in this building is just the envelope needs to be tightened up on it. Uh, as we did see some evidence of water damage in a few different locations throughout, and the carpet needs to be replaced as well. These aren't all the short term needs, they're just kind of highlights of what we want to bring out. No real safety or security issues were noted when we uh, went through the building and, and talked to staff about it. <clears throat> but there are still some needs. So, so we identify in the next five years about $160,000 of improvements are needed at the facility. Followed by about 41,000 in the, the middle year cycles of five, and then the 11 through 15, about 455,000. So, about you know, 655,000 in um, uh, improvements as compared to a, a new building that's going to cost you eight to nine hundred thousand dollars to put up. It's not a real expensive building, it's a pre engineered steel building. So, it's one of those ones where you look at your replacement and ongoing maintenance costs don't have a huge difference. Does anybody have any questions on that one? I'll put the exterior need is. I see that's uh, in the first one to five years. Yeah, so that the, the main uh, expense is the uh, you know the flashing of the doors and the replacement of the metal panels. The okay. Building is probably your main expense on that. So, but the roof and all that all is good. Um, well, the middle building. Uh, the roof, that's why the well, like that 10 year is more expensive because that's that's when you get into um, okay. uh, roof issues on metal buildings, and um, those are seamed roofs, they usually are mechanically seamed roofs, and so they become more difficult to pull apart, and so you end up replacing the whole roof itself, okay. And that's why you notice that the replacement cost is not that much more than the maintenance because at that point you, your your roof is almost ha you know half of your skin cost on the metal building so okay does that thank does that help yes thank you okay it's it's a slight it's a slow pitched roof yeah
Okay, Trisha Yarbrough, does that help your question? Yes, thank, thank you. you. All right, so that kind of finishes up the public safety and courts buildings. If you guys want to flip to 138 in your, I can't believe I'm saying that number of presentation, 138 in the material you have in front of you, we're going to jump back over to administration and operations area and talk about 100 Church Street. Well, a pretty classic uh, component building downtown. By the way, if you hear my nose stuffed up, I've had three negative tests this week, so <laughs> nobody be concerned. <laughs> um, built in 1950, tiny little quarter acre site right downtown, uh, brick veneer masonry building, uh, tax equalization departments in there. Mm -hmm. It's kind of it's a great old historic building looking. I mean, if you look at it, it's got a little exterior needs. The inside. I'm not going to surprise you guys have all seen the inside of the building. Some of the short-term needs, while it doesn't have a ton of parking, the parking it does have needs to be addressed. Um, the stucco panel on the northwest exterior wall has multiple cracks, so either a, a new metal panel or a drive it panel on that to kind of keep water from getting through there. Uh, new seal at the perimeter of all the windows. Replaced all the door hardware with ADA-compliant lever-type hardware. Um, some carpeting finishes and that, for other floor finishes and are worn require replacement. So not a ton of typical short-term deferred maintenance needs on the building that we would see. Uh, the biggest thing there is I would get on that stucco panel just to keep water out of the building. Water is always the enemy of buildings. In the next five years, the, the needs there are about $250,000. <clears> Year 6 to 10, about 25000 It gives you a nice little breather there. And then years 11 through 15, about 245000 So about $522,000 of needs there in the next 15 years. But that's compared to $1.82 million to replace that building if you had to. So um, if it's a building that the county decides that it has long-term plans and needs for, it makes sense to keep investing in it versus replacing that space with new. Does anybody have any questions on the Hunter Church building? MSU Extension, um, located on Hilldale Road. Um, the, the county owns the, the building itself, the 220 acres around it, Michigan State owns. Uh, there's five other buildings on the property besides the one the county owns. Uh, buildings wood frame, brick veneer with some vinyl siding. And Robert, do you want to tell them what happened last time the big windstorms came through? Yeah, yeah, I just did the last completion. We had that large windstorm that came through uh, without the siding. You know, and the you see the picture there, took up pieces of siding. And it's, uh, it's aluminum with the styrofoam back on. You're not going to get that particular product anymore. It needs to be resided. It, it was at that point anyway, just kind of probably forced the need to reside it with that coming off, not be able to match it. Just some views of the building. Pretty. Wait, that first picture, you can wait, actually Robert, see wait, wait. Wait. I'm sorry. I'm not even sure you guys are mic. can't hear your hand. There you go. If you see on that first picture on the left, you can see that the siding has actually come loose. And that was before the windstorm. So that damage actually got exacerbated by the wind. <laughs> yes, can I just ask a history question? I, why do we own this building? No, sir, that looks a map when these questions come up. <laughs> why do we own this building? We've had a, <laughs> a long-term relationship with MSU. I mean, ag is a big part of Berrien County. They've wanted to have a presence here and they've wanted to work with our cooperative extension folks. And um, it's not just our county, but we, um, we have a facility that they make great use of and our farmers John can tell you how much they benefit from having MSU here. Um, so this goes back, I mean, that relationship goes back to the 1960s. It's and not that, it's if they own all the rest of it, how come we own one building on that property? Well, we need a place to house our people also. And it was convenient to be right there with their folks, so. And it's, Julia was a little bit more than just convenient. They needed to be there because that's where all the work takes place. The, the food programs, the extent, it all takes place there. And so they needed to be housed on that facility. So it made it made perfect sense to house them there. We have people. That's, that's yeah. what I didn't understand yes. is who are those people that we have there. I don't understand. I don't totally get that. 
it, it, it's not uncommon for counties to have those, the county and the MSU extension offices together in the building because there's such overlap in the work they do. So that, that's very typical. Does that adequately cover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yep. And that's how I should have said that as well because you see MSU extension, you're like, why do we have that? They don't have everything else. So right. <laughs> So just some of the short-term needs out there on the site. Uh, entry to the building needs a little, the approach walk needs a little bit of work just to come in compliance with the ADA. Uh, replace the siding, uh, replace the ground mile and mechanical unit. Uh, some LED upgrades, so some LED lights around the site, given the age of the lights, they're gonna start failing now, so you might as well go the LEDs. Um, safety and security issues. I mentioned the ADA, but it's also a safety issue. So for that reason, it should be done. <clears throat> the duress cameras was kind of requested to be in the reception area so somebody can notify somebody if there's a problem. We actually have one in our office for reception. There's a little button under the desk if there's something happens, they can hit that. It goes off through the office. They're, they're a relatively inexpensive thing that gives a, a nice sense of security at the front of a building. Um, yes, are, are you uh, recommending that for just this building or other buildings you'll that see, we have? You'll see we have recommendations for... Okay. The almost, other, almost, so, almost sure. all. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll see in the other reports that we have um, um, the the panic or the distress uh, buttons called out for other buildings as well. Yeah, that, I just highlighted this, but in the actual reports, it's there in other ones. So I just all right. Thank, thank you. Here. Yeah. So needs there. But $137,000 in needs for, for the next five years. Um, that's nothing surprising given the age and construction of the building. After that investment, you don't need to do anything for six to 10. That's going to carry you for a while. So 11 to 15, as Dirk was talking about earlier, some of those needs we do now are going to come back up again. And some systems needs, given the age of the building, will be coming up. So you're looking at about $232,000 in the next 15 years. That, that compares to $850,000, $950,000 to replace that building. So all in all, keep, if you need that building, keeping the money going into it, it's a, it's a really good investment versus having to build a new building. Is there any questions on the MSU extension building slash county? Good. Barry and Bus, this one's special. Uh, Shawnee Road down in Berrien Springs, uh, 1.6 acres. It was actually a hardware store, I believe, before it was Berrien Bus. You in the history of it? We think it was either hardware or like a lumber. I'm sorry. That's all right. Is this, okay. We think it was either, uh, between Robert and I, we think it's either a lumber, was a lumber supply where they actually did woodworking in there or just a, a lumber sale but it seems to look like a lumber, an old lumber store. So since I want to point, it's built around 1960, just shy of 15,000 square feet, about 1,200 square feet of office space, 6,700 square feet in the main garage, 6,400 in the maintenance area. Then there's a wash bay building on the site that was built in 2008 that's just shy of 2,000 square feet. And then there's a circa 1960, 4,100 square foot building. Uh, it's open to the weather. You'll see a picture of it here in a minute. Uh, that's the three buildings on that site. Uh, here's just some exterior photos. That's that last building in the bottom right there I was talking about with the open sides. It's more of just a covered storage for the buses. There's some interior stuff on the building. Site, pavings in poor condition, needs replacement. The slope of the walk approaching the entry does not meet requirements, needs to be addressed. In the main, again, he said everything, but just some of the highlights on the short term needs. <clears throat> the office area requires new flooring, the break room and the restrooms. Uh, the garage and maintenance areas require a large amount of exterior metal panel. And the interior panels have all been backed into, dinged up, hit. the yeah, assortment of stuff that's typical over the years. Um, some bollard to help stop that or some concrete walls. Um, but there's some replacement needs there because it's, it's going to keep having more issues with that. Uh, the floors in the garage maintenance area really should be clean and epoxy just for better maintenance and cleanliness moving forward. I was on the main building, storage building. Open air storage building requires a new end wall, metal siding, uh, new metal roofing, exposed framing should either be painted or wrapped. 
uh, safety and security issues, fire alarm system should be upgraded, uh, site and building interior uh, camera should be added just for some, uh, some security. This is the one that the numbers matter on because initial cost right now, next five years, you probably should spend about $860,000 on that building. A lot of deferred maintenance. Uh, six to 10 years out, there's another 88,000 and then years left through 15, try at 400,000, about $1.3 million. It's gonna be needed in the next 15 years on this building. You're gonna be, to replace everything there, less than that in the 950 to $1.1 million range. Um, this is one of those ones where I risk not knowing where the third rail of politics are, but if, if it was our recommendation before you put any money in this building, make sure that you have long-term needs for both bearing bus to be in this building and at this location, because it might make more sense to maybe sell this facility and work bearing bus into one of your other operating areas. Just a thought as we go through this process to put in the back of your mind, because if you're looking at your next 15 years worth of needs versus building a new facility, we start seeing numbers like this. It makes you think about what's the good policy decision for the county. And just please, Tony, to add to that, um, to add to that, I am. Uh, you'll you'll see that in what we've noticed in our assessment of these facilities is that we've talked to Robert about this as well, which is you you acquired these buildings that were previously used by something else. And, and probably initially and over the years, it served well, but it, it's starting to catch up to the utilization, the efficiency of the building, um, because technologies change, equipment changes, uh, personnel changes, and the, the buildings are not in this, and this is a prime example of that, that, that it was great for a while, but now it's starting to catch up to being a good support of what's needed there. Thanks. That's a great point, Dirk. It wasn't built for how it's being used, so you are having some efficiency losses too. Yes, Tony, as you assess this property and maybe some of the others, did you look for any environmental issues? You know, tanks, contamination, anything at all? There you go. Okay. Um, the evaluation of these were non-destructive. So um, unless we had reports from staff or you know, previous environmental reports, um, we did not perform environmental studies of groundwater or tanks unless it was known. Yeah, so. what we will do though, that's a great point. I'll go through the Eagle website where there's reported the history of all environmental issues. I'll run all the county buildings. And if we come up with anything, we will address it. That's, that's a great point. Thank you very much. May I, yes, may I ask something? Um, I've been here a long time, and so I know the buildings and all. And there was a plan at the Berrien County Health Department, and you haven't shown us that building yet, have you? Coming up. <laughs> okay. <Next door. laughs> okay. There was a plan to put like a depot or a transfer station because, like, um, Twenty Dakota can't go in certain areas. They all have their where they stop. But to be able to transfer people, get them to Niles South Bend, they're always practicing how long does it take and can you do it? Are you aware of that? No, I've not seen that, but I will get with the administrator and, and we will get that study and work that into our report. Yeah, and we can, some of us that's been here can talk to you about it because Brian doesn't know either then. That's great. I would love to do that. If you, I, before I leave, I will give you my card. Mm -hmm. And I, if you would like to grab some time, let's sit down and we'd love to hear the background on that. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. A question. Yes, sir. On, on the value, is that a separate process? In, in, in other words, if we were to sell this property, that would be a separate process. But we can, I can talk. I, I work with a lot of different realtors. I'm happy to give them a call on some of these ones. I didn't want to get the cart in front of the horse right. without the board saying, "Hey, find out what it's worth." We do live in a small town. I'm also going to ask a realtor, "What's this building worth?" Before I talk to you guys, and then somebody, you know how it works. So, if you guys want, you guys want me to get an idea of what that building would be worth on the open market. Just more well, not particularly this one. I think kind of Bob alluded to the fact that you know we're gonna we're, we may want to get rid of more than one building, and that's why I was wondering: is that part of this yeah. process of what we we contracted you for, or is that a separate process that we would have to contract with someone else to determine values? Amazing, Mike. <laughs> so that is not a um, a specified service in uh, the agreement that we have with Avon Marsh. It is something that Abbott Marsh has already begun assisting us with. 
Uh, there's been a number of uh, feelers placed out to commercial redevelopment specialists for the, uh, the court and jail property. At no point are we taking any action. We're just trying to assess what some of the properties may be worth. Having the same conversation on Barry and Bus and any of the other properties that you all are going to see is something we can we can make happen. I can tell you that with Barry and Bus, the uh, the school has been very active in acquiring the adjacent properties that surround the school. This is one that is directly across the street from the school. And before we would do anything, we would follow up with the school superintendent. I, I met with uh, Superintendent Eichberg probably a year and a half ago. And at that time, I believed that there was some interest in uh, the county's property if we were to ever vacate. Um, you could sell this to the school very quickly. Now, that's a year and a half ago. They may have changed. I know they've acquired other property for their busing uh, needs. But to answer your immediate question, is this in included in their, their project? No. Are they already helping us with it? Yes. Can we get a value on this property very quickly? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yep, no problem. Thanks. Um, quick question. Yes, sir. Um, so to Mamie's point, um, is there any property that we have um, that has a facility or a building that we could sort of transfer this over to, or are we talking just constructing a new building? I, I think that a transfer station doesn't have to be a huge facility. Um, in fact, a few years ago, Takata had us looking at one downtown Benton Harbor. Um, you don't need to do a huge facility for a transfer. You just need something that's big enough for people to get in out of the weather while they're waiting for that next bus to come. So um, I think I, I can confidently say there's probably an opportunity within one of the county facilities for a transfer facility to be set up, if that's something the board would want. Yeah, mm -hmm. the health department. A place to, that you knew the time they were coming in. All yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, keep going. Okay. So any questions on that Barry and Bus building? Uh, great dialogue on that too, by the way. That was kind of where our headspace was at on some of these questions you were exactly asking. So that's always a good sign. Health department, we haven't done the Benton Harbor campus. Thank you, Commissioner Yarborough, for getting that one teed up perfectly as usual. I'm serious. It's like a, it's a, it's a 1950s act. We got the straight person and the comedic relief, which is me. Um, we talked about the Niles office last time because it's part of that South County building. It's one of the smaller users in there. And really, anything we do at that South County building, because of just efficiencies and workflow, you're going to want to do it all in once, regardless of the department down there. Um, the Three Oaks building, obviously, you guys know what's going on with that in terms of discussions with the village. So really the focus for the health department operations has been on the Benton Harbor campus. Um, over at 2149 East Napier, uh, built in 1999 and had rehab since obviously. <clears throat> 51,700 square foot facility, uh, single story, slab on grade, steel frame building with some brick and cast stone, um, drive it, steel cladding. Uh, the health department uh, uses about just shy of 25,000 square feet of that area. Uh, the county meeting room is just shy of 2,800 square feet, and the county garage is about 25,000 square feet. So that's kind of the user groups in there and how much they have within the facility. Uh, just some exterior views of the building. As you can see, there is some asphalt needs there. When it gets cracked and gets that bad, that means we've lost structural integrity. And all these pictures when I was putting this together, seeing snow got really depressing yesterday. It really did. It's like, crap. At least I didn't have to be out of this. So thanks, guys. So some interior shots of both the health department areas and the garage there. Some great church pews. So short-term uh, issues on the site. <coughs> the uh, Actually, the adjacent bridge and abutment there, that's where a lot of the water is coming from that's getting into your parking lot. So addressing some of the stuff there will help with some of your flooding. Uh, parking area is not organized. Um, short of, you know, mill and fill and the whole thing, uh, we'd recommend... Uh, resealing it and restriping it to give a better flow of traffic in the lot. Um, we saw it especially when the COVID clinics were going on there. Uh, create a zone for staff and the public, kind of keep those users separated for parking. Uh, building exterior, replace some of the existing metal siding that has been damaged at the garage. On the interior, uh, some of the initial short-term stuff, repair and add heating units to the garage area. Half the units are inoperable or some areas don't even have a heating unit. Uh, repair cracks in the drywall in various locations and perimeter walls. Safety and security, this is a lot of the issues are identified over there. 
Um, the main entrance needs some improved visibility and signage. Uh, a security track point could be really created at the main entrance and recommended. Uh, provide sound insulation in the sexual health area walls. So what I understand, there's some conversations that can leak out of that area. So just for privacy and the HIPAA stuff, it'd probably be advisable to do that. Uh, fresh air intake near the loading dock is, is the way it's arranged. The fumes are drawing in there. So that intake should be reworked, the duct work to kind of alleviate that issue. Um, provide visual deterrence solutions for the offices in the conference room and apply film and glazing on doors and side lights. So those are some of the initial like privacy, safety, security things we'd recommend that happen at that building. Short term that facility with the parking lot, safety, security, uh, some of the other needs. Uh, in the next one to five years, $1.7 million worth of needs there. Uh, six to 10 years, just over half a million dollars worth of needs. <clears throat> and then 11 through 15 years, and just let me start saying for it now if you can, that's when a lot of the systems, given the age of that building, are now going to be needed redone. So you're about $3.8 million worth of needs is those systems, the big systems hit into life during that 15 year period there. <clears throat> about $6.1 million worth of needs there in the next 15 years. Again, though, that compares to 10 to $11.5 million, almost twice as much, if you were to have to start over and build that facility. And that's in today's dollars without any inflationary rate, if you wait to do that in five, 10 years. So again, if, 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 it, if it functions well for you and it's needed, keep investing in the building because it's cheaper than um, building a new one for these services. Uh, any, yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, just a comment. Um, we're working on our broadband initiative and uh, we had talked about through our committee about doing a loop to uh, bring fiber to all the buildings, but none of your estimates in here uh, in any of the buildings have even addressed that on, on the cost of that. So that could be exponentially a lot more, not just bringing the loop, but actually the nodes and the hubs to bring it to the building and then the hookup. So uh, I think that, that it's giving us a little bit of a false number. So if we could address that somehow, some way, uh, so that would let the board know what it would take for each of the county buildings to be hooked up to that um, high speed, uh, you know, the fiber, because yes. bringing it is different. At this time, we have high speed internet connected to our buildings. We are either using Comcast or AT&T for the, uh, the monthly service. Right. Um, Chris Weihart and the IS department are engaged in a series of conversations with alternate vendors looking at what the cost would be to construct our own fiber loop. And this would be a major shift going from essentially leasing to owning. And that is something that just yesterday we were on a, um, a Zoom with Merit Network. We had some technical difficulties. It got shifted to this Friday. But we do have some initial cost estimating from Merit Network on what a fiber loop just to connect all county <coughs> buildings would be. Uh, Chris and his team are digesting all of that information now. And our intent is to bring forward to BCBIT and then to the full board what your options are. But I think that as we look at the future of our broadband connectivity, more than likely owning your own fiber network is going to make sense. Uh, the cost for what we're spending with AT&T and Comcast is quite high. And I think just if you look out on a 25 year basis, you can easily justify owning the network. The concern coming out of IS right now is they are already very short staffed. They are already tasked with dozens of projects and the thought of taking on a publicly owned and operated fiber loop is something that is causing a little bit of anxiety. So we need to allow Chris some time to get his hands around what would this, what would it cost to construct and then figuring out how would we maintain it? Is it something that his people would be doing or relying on a third party vendor? To your point, we will pull that into the overall study and make sure that if we move to a publicly owned and maintained <laughs> fiber loop, that it is being treated as our other assets, that it is being built into the overall capital plan and that dollars are being set aside to maintain it. Does that address your, your concern? Um, yeah, it, and it's only part of it. My other part was, is that we can, if we come up with a total cost of owning this fiber loop, okay, 
um, however that works out. It does not still address the costs involved that once the fiber is to a particular building, hooking that up on the inside, mm -hmm. that is going to be another expense for each building to get that fiber. Because bringing fiber to a building is completely different than bringing the AT&T phone lines or the Comcast, uh, uh, you know, hard copper lines to it. So that was my that was my other point about incorporating that. Yeah, rough numbers to build a fiber loop right now to connect all your buildings, 3.5 million. That's that's a rough number, but it's pretty accurate based on on a cost per, suit, per foot using the existing merit network uh, loop that's already in the county. All right, thank you. So that concludes the, the, that area for the health department. We're gonna go to Parks and Recreation Cultural Resources next. Um, the ones in dark ones we're going to talk about today, the ones in gray weren't part of the original um, RFP when it went out, but we're working them in anyway. Um, the guys have already done all the field work this past week, so they're going to be writing up those reports and they'll be due next week. The upside is those three are your newest parks, and honestly, there's not a lot of needs there, and we're talking about using some of your ARPA funds, so they're not going to probably factor into that broader conversation, but we are doing evaluations of those, but you're really not missing anything by them not being in there. So the first one is, is Silver Beach. Um, uh, 22 acres along Lake Michigan. It's a very iconic park. Everybody knows Silver Beach. Nine buildings you can see that are highlighted throughout the park area there. Uh, you got an office building that was built in 1995 and serves as kind of the administrative operations hub of the park. You got a, build, a maintenance building that was built in 1995. <clears throat> there's some ongoing flooding issues at that building. There's been conversations about, is there a need to relocate it that are still going on? There's two, both a men's and a women's bathroom buildings, and each one's divided into two bathrooms with mechanicals in between. You know, concession building. The concession building was actually built in the 90s, but it was built as a temporary structure. It was never meant to be there this long. Um, it continues to be used as vendor space. Um, Take on the staff, just the damage and the condition of it. The, the staff is really interested in, in getting a replacement for that structure. Uh, you got the ticket booth that was built in 95, CMU block walls, uh, sliding window, not a whole lot to that building. And then the pier restroom built in 2014 are the structures there. Just some site, oh God, I can't wait for someone to be gone forever. Uh, some pictures of the structure there, the beach area. There's some of the interiors, we're all pretty familiar with those sites down there. Short-term needs, um, one of the big things, and it's not necessarily part of it, but we want to note it right away with this assessment, there is traffic flow and operation needs there, as we all know. Ongoing conversations have been going on between the county and the city, trying to figure out the best way to address that. So traffic can continue to flow through there. And, and it can be a public safety issue. If there's ever a call and that traffic's all backed up through there, it's hard to get through that area. So it's, we all know it's an issue. Everybody's working out. Everybody knows it's there. Um, maintenance building floods. Pier restrooms need protection from rain and water. We're getting some water infiltration. Uh, concession building, there's no other way to put it. It's well beyond its, its expected life cycle. Staff done a great job keeping that thing going as long as they have. Uh, playground needs upgrades. It's not ADA compliant. Um, general painting needs throughout the park or the park area. Uh, walkway lights, there's several walkway lights that need to be replaced. <clears throat> and there's some erosion issues at the Dune Pavilion that need to be addressed before that gets any further damage. Uh, safety and security issues, the primary ones, those walkway lights out, I, I mentioned that does cause some dark areas out there in the park, so it's a good idea to get those addressed. Uh, there's a little bit of heaving sidewalk, that sidewalk out there is what, 12 inches? It's pretty thick. It's pretty, yeah. Um, so either, either you need to replace, you can actually grind a sidewalk and level it back out where those panels split, so that, that should happen here, it's just some minor trip hazard stuff. And then the Shadowland panels weren't uh, secured and that with the high winds can do that. Um, one of the things, is particularly hard with keeping up facilities like this. Beaches are the most unhospitable thing in the world to build and maintain buildings. They are constantly getting blasted by sand, sun. That sand is just like being in a sandblast chamber all day long. And you think when it hits year after year after year. So they're just notoriously hard to maintain buildings on a beach or anything. So next five years, there's $1.1 million with just your existing facilities of recommended improvements. Year six to 10, another 1.12 million. 
once you get through that, you've hit a lot of stuff. So the out years, 11 through 15, only about $200,000 worth of stuff will be needed. So about, again, I don't mean only 200, but relatively it's only. Um, total cost, 2.3 million, 2.36 million of needs there. This is another one, but it, it, most of this is because of the environment. It's just your maintenance costs on the beach are always going to be higher than that. So you, you have about 2.3 million worth of cost, and that's a lot of site stuff too, um, as compared to 850 to 1.1 million to replace the buildings you have out there. But again, we have a lot of site stuff in that number as well, not just the buildings. Yes, ma'am. Is the, the replacement, the 1.15, does that include the plan that uh, we have? No, it does for, not. That does not. No, that, this is just your What is the total on that plan, Brian? <sighs> Rough numbers is roughly six. So the, uh, the Silver Beach uh, Master Plan that's been reviewed by the, uh, the Parks Commission, um, they have not formally adopted, but... I think that the votes are there to formally adopt at their next meeting, which is in next, next week, week, next week. So that plan has been developed in conjunction with DLZ engineering and it is an impressive plan. It is also got some things that have to be addressed before uh, being finalized and, and constructed. Uh, there is calls for a uh, very uh, grand, um, food area, uh, two-story two uh, concession area with sit-down dining. Um, there is a discussion about whether or not to allow a liquor license to be present at the site. And then finally, there's a discussion about whether or not to consider a much longer-term lease agreement to then bring in private capital to help construct the, uh, the concession stand. If it were to be built today and money was no object, you'd be looking at about a $6 million project not included in this number. And it's about three to five years. Yeah. It's a really nice drawing, though. It is pretty. Are there any more questions on Silver Beach County Park? <coughs> Love Creek. Uh, built uh, down on Huckleberry there in Berrien Center. It was built in 1990. Uh, Nature, Nature Center building consists of gable roof, metal standing seam, uh, bended soffits, the wood sided buildings, field stone base. Uh, maintenance building is metal clad structure with asphalt shingle roof. I mean, kind of what you typically would expect in a park area. It's a nice building. It was well designed when it was done. Just some views of the building itself, the Nature Center, and the, the storage building. Some of the interiors, boots from ski rental. Uh, some of the short-term needs there, re repair, replace, and repaint doors. Uh, repair the failing field stone around the base of the building. Uh, new asphalt roof and fascia on the one building. Uh, replace the baseboard heater, replace the water heater. Uh, repair the baseboards, walls, ceiling. Just typical dings, use stuff you see given the age of the building that you would normally expect to have to deal with and replace at this point. Uh, safety security. The only real issue there, safety security wise, um, see, uh, safety or sorry, security cameras needed at the maintenance garage, just so while staff's out there by themselves, there's something tracking what's going on because that maintenance garage is kind of off the beaten path a little bit in terms of sight lines from the rest of the site at times. Uh, spending out there, uh, next one to five years, about two hundred thirty-one thousand dollars worth of needs out there were identified. One hundred sixty-six thousand in years six through ten. And just shy of 490,000 in years 11 through 15. Uh, total needs out there in the next 15 years, about $887,000. Um, that's as compared to a replacement cost of the facility of 1.5 to 1.8. So again, it's, if you look at it over this cost of 15 years, it's better to keep the buildings up than have to replace them. Any questions on Love Creek? Sorry, I missed a slide and I apologize. No, I didn't, that's it. We'll go to Madeline Bertrand next. They were at Adams Road in Niles Township. <coughs> Complex built in 1990, has five uh, buildings, including a pavilion and a playground, about 121 acres worth of land. Here's just some pictures of the buildings out on the site. Overall for the age and construction, they're well maintained. There's just some, again, hints of the capital improvement needs you typically see. Um, there's the playground, some of the other structures. Uh, some of the short-term needs, uh, site and trim repair, 
replace the drinking fountain. Playground needs to be replaced. And again, we keep bringing up the playground. Just the standards have changed so much for playgrounds in the last 20, 25 years in terms of accessibility, the play surfaces, all that. So you're not different than any other community having playgrounds with this finish that need to be upgraded. Um, cabinet counters, uh, tops need to be replaced. Some door and window replacement. Uh, safety and security issues, it's, it's more about relocating the existing cameras just to create some better view sheds to, to around the property. <clears throat> Spending by year, next one to five years out there is about $433,000. Uh, years six to 10, $445,000. Years 11 to 15, $862,000. It takes you just short of $1.75 million. Again, when parks are kind of like this, 1.2 to 1.5 to replace it, just it's the use and nature of them that they tend to have high maintenance and ongoing costs as compared to just building new. But plus there's site conditions. The site conditions and everything, exactly. Yeah, factor in. Any questions on Madeline Bertram? Yes, ma'am. What did he say here about the piece of property we just bought? I don't know where Brian is. <laughs> I'm not small, so he can stand pretty behind, behind me and hide. Um, that new property, did we buy it? We got the DQ Dairy Queen money. Yeah, so we have expanded the, the park boundaries. Um, there are no improvements at the site. Uh, we do have some buildings that are there. Okay. Uh, we'll make okay. sure that uh, before this thing is finalized that uh, a demolition plan is included um, for for that site. Okay. Um, what we're trying to do now is just pull in all of uh, the department heads to look at this thing just to make sure that we haven't missed anything. And with parks, to parks credit, they have had the biggest vision. Um, to, uh, I guess, the, the difficulty is just making sure that this finalized plan reflects all of the different visions that have been created in the New Buffalo area, in the Niles area, in the Water Bleed area, and it was Silver Beach. They have been really, really good about crafting plans, using those plans then to seek DNR funds. Yeah. The problem is that there are so many plans and a lot of the things did not come to fruition. So making sure that we have the very best and most likely to be constructed is built into your capital plan. Okay, thank you. Yep. Ryan, you up here. Yes, sir. Um, at the time, that wood building that's out there overlooking the river. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A couple of years ago, they were talking about either tearing it down, replacing it, rebuilding it. Did that ever get done? So, no. And it's more than just the wood building. So there, there was the house, and then I think there was two barns on the site. Um, there was a little bit of thought given to trying to rehab some of it, but uh, I've been down there a couple of times, and I think the general consensus among staff was they're too far gone. The, the house has not been inhabited for at least a decade or longer. I think he's, you're not talking about the building that's on the St. Joe River. That one on the yeah, bottom left. That, that yes. one, they're talking about not, keeping, not fixing it. So I believe that's the intent. Um, I can confirm with Jill just to make sure that what I'm telling you is yeah. the latest and greatest. But oh, well, no. when I walked the site with both Jill and Brian, I think that there was general agreement that there is a reason that the family had not been using the home and the family had not used the home for an extended period of time. <clears throat> I'm not talking about the home. I'm talking about the, let me show you. Yeah. The yeah. lookout pavilion. The pavilion, it's on this, it's already, oh, oh, already oh, oh, there. Oh, it's already yeah, there. That's okay. But it's, it's. The deck was. It's weak. The deck <coughs> was not good. Erosion and everything, I think. So what we have as part of the park system, believe the intent is to repair. The home that is on the newly acquired property is what we are not planning to maintain. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I was also, I was also just gonna add that there's also some erosion at that river overlook that was noted by Jill. And so we have that in the report that that um, that there's some site work there as well, and that there are some structural deficiencies that need to be addressed at the Riverview okay. Overlook. So, 
we haven't seen that. Any other questions on that facility? We're getting there, folks. I appreciate your patience as we've slogged through this. History Center Courthouse Square. And I'm going to ask, and seeing this thing with like four different names, what is it technically called? Courthouse. Courthouse. <laughs> I was kind of, I think I merged like four different ones together for this one. So. <laughs> this is a really cool complex, though. Uh, down on Cass Street in Berrien Springs, there's five different buildings spread across 1.6 acres. <clears throat> the courthouse building that's serving as a museum and gift shop was built in 1839, as was the sheriff's residence that's used as a museum and office space. There's a records building that was built in 1859, the cabin built in 1830, um, and then uh, Bennett's Forge was built in 1978, um, pretty standard block building with asphalt roof. Here's some buildings with the pictures of the facility. With the interior shots. <clears throat> Short term needs, you're going to see a lot of the same ADA things we've talked about some of the other sites. Um, the wood boardwalk needs to be replaced and be made accessible. Um, right now, it's currently not. Uh, concrete's our recommended approach there. Uh, the gates of the walks need to repair to replace. Uh, the fronts around the property need some minor repairs. Um, courthouse building, uh, masonry base requires some minor tuck pointing. Uh, sheriff's office needs some tuck pointing. Door and window <coughs> flares. Front entry needs new handrails and stairs, and the jail deck requires stale handrail repairs and improvements just to comply with ADA. <clears throat> Records building requires new stairs, landing, and handrails. Uh, the log cabin requires a roof, uh, door window repairs, and some siding repairs. Uh, and the, the forge is going to need a roof and some, pretty soon here in the future as well as some door and window stuff. safety security concerns. Really, the biggest issue out there, if you look at the site, it's that ADA accessibility. Right now, those walkways that are out there, there are some hazards. They don't really meet standards. So um, replacing those would be the biggest recommendation out there on the short term. Uh, spending, next five years, that facility is going to need about $300,000, uh, about $13,000 in year six to 10, and about $82,000 in the out five-year cycle, for about $400,000 in the next 15 years. Replacement costs, these are historical buildings. You're not exactly going to replace it. So we don't really have a number. Either you have them, they're used as this, or you don't at the end of the day. Is there any questions on the court? Which I like much better than my term because I didn't have to type as much. Great. So what that allows us to do is to look at the numbers overall, because as you've seen through 194 pages right now, we've covered a lot of stuff quickly. We skimmed it. The reports will be to you next week, and I'll, I'll cover that here in a minute. <clears throat> but based on everything, I'm going to start with the public safety and court system section. Uh, next five years, there was $26 million worth of needs identified there. Um, you see that go down to about $4.5 million in the next five-year cycle. A lot of this, because you got a lot of the age of those buildings aligned with systems just sitting end of life. You know what I mean? Need to be replaced. Uh, about $10 million in the, out, uh, the final set for about $41 million. No, go okay, great. Um, so I want to put here, because we did talk last time about what does it look like to build a new jail and court maybe versus putting this, even if this, this body decides to pursue that, you're probably five years out before that be done, best case. There's going to need to be some, some investments in the jail and courthouse, regardless of that decision during that time period. Brian, do you want to talk yeah. about that? So at the, uh, the beginning of today's presentation, we talked about the ticking time clock. And the reality is that we have until the end of 2024. So December 31st, 2024, for the, the, the spend down of ARPA funds. If projects aren't reviewed, out to bid, approved, and under contract by the end of 2024, we will be returning unspent dollars to the federal government. There is no extension that is being conceived of by the, the federal government. There is no chatter about uh, allowing any type of uh, flexibility on the use of ARPA funds. The one provision that we have is that if we get contracts approved prior to the end of 2024, you can then run the projects out until the end of 2026 for, um, for completion. So we've got a little bit of flexibility. But this is the pep talk where I'm going to be asking the board, we need to light the fire. 
if we are going to make this happen, we need to be committing to projects and getting these things designed, bid, and contracts in hand to allow us to move forward. Now, as you look at uh, the screen, we have got more than enough that you could gobble up the bulk of the, uh, the, the total $30 million allocation of BARPA funds. What we don't have is a whole lot of time. And I know that there is an, an absolute desire to look at the future of the courthouse and the jail. And I'm not arguing that. Um, we have begun the process of seeking outside interest in what those values would be. But what I need is some direction from the board on whether or not you all are comfortable with us providing maintenance projects to those two sites? If the answer is yes, what we will then do is finalize a priority list of what we think makes sense as far as investments in those buildings and then the other buildings. If the board is of the mindset that no, pouring money into those, those two buildings just doesn't make sense, then that's okay. We will increase the investment into the county's other building stock so that we're ensuring that we are spending down the ARPA dollars in a way that is truly responsible. Yes, sir. Um, as for the courthouse jail, uh, I'll treat those as one because they're on the same footprint. If we were thinking about building a new jail, then we should not have invested 7 million in receiving and the upgrades and everything else. The courthouse has been upgraded a couple times since we moved down here and we moved down here maybe 20 years ago uh, when, when we pulled everybody out. I still don't know how we had all those in the courthouse building. You know, everybody who was here was in there. I, I mean, it was like sardines in a can, but we've made some significant investments in those properties and it would have been better if we were thinking about building new, just to stop, look at a marketing plan for condos on the bluff and building new. But we've done that and we've bought an extra 25 years or so of useful life. Plus, the cost of a new jail, the cost of a new courthouse would soak up 30 million just like that. You wouldn't even come close. And that's why we have the ability to bond for that type of major capital improvement. We haven't used our, our building bonding prowess, but we have significant ability to borrow long-term. And if we go that way at some point, in the future. I wouldn't advocate it in the next 20 years, frankly. But if we do, then we can look at, at a significant public works project, locate somewhere out of town. New jails are not as labor intensive as the one that we have. It's vertical. The new ones have a hub and have, have spokes coming out. So you can staff with fewer people and you can do it in a modular way. You can add a unit, you build it, but you don't finish it. You've, you've tapped your mechanical and your electrical systems. And if you want to populate that wing, you can fairly easily do it. But I would say, let's use the ARPA money for infrastructure improvements, for fixing what we have, enhancing what we have. And if we are looking at building a new jail and a new courthouse at some point, be it out on Napier, be it down in Berrien Springs, wherever it happens to be. We also need to look at what we're going to do with the South County complex. That's a whole thing unto itself. So my recommendation to the board would be, don't pour that money into the jail and the courthouse. Let's fix those up as we need to, to keep them operating in an optimal way. But let's look at these other projects. And um, I think we can commit that 30 million without any trouble in the next two and a half years. Just my two cents worth. Yes, sir. You know, I, I tend to agree with you, The but I think there's a couple other things to keep in mind. Um, the property on the bluff were occupied by the jail and the 
courthouse, I think is a critical part to the Harbor Redevelopment Initiative um, down in, in the Benton Harbor Harbor. And I think Mayor Muhammad just mentioned that in yesterday's Herald Palladium. And so it, it, I guess part, I, I, I tend to agree that we want the, the 30 million is a drop in the bucket compared to relocating those two activities. But it might be good to take some of the 30 million to actually thoughtfully look at what the, the relocation might entail, um, not just the, the logistics of doing it, but the planning out of what a new facility might be so that you actually do that. I mean, my worry is in 20 years, we're going to have a jail that's 20 years or older and the number of maintenance issues will continue to snowball. And then, you know, there, there, I think there are, while we've renovated the courthouse multiple times, there still are, you know, it, you know, issues in there that I think we can use some of the ARPA dollars to address, but the time to plan out that, that bonding, which I, I tend to agree that it's going to take that, um, it, you know, 20 years makes me a little nervous, to be honest. Well, I hear you. And if we start to look for a site and develop schematics and renderings and so forth. If we do that much more than five years ahead, it's going to be dated. So um, I think we need about a five year window. We would, if we were looking at a new jail and a new courthouse right now, it would take about five years to pull it all together and build it. So once we get to that point, um, you know, Paul is going to retire. Um, Chuck will likely uh, be putting his name in for the next sheriff. Being that he's a young guy, he'll be around a while, like all of us young folks, and uh, or a couple of us anyway are young. But um, it'll be for, for the next sheriff and for a future board to look at pulling that together. And then we have things like the Supreme Court. If we decided to go outside of the places where we are authorized to conduct court business, right now we're authorized in the city of St. Joe, the city of Niles, and the village of Berrien Springs for ceremonial things only. We can't actually have court proceedings there without special dispensation. You know, the court has come down and done oral arguments there before, but that's not the norm. So if we were looking, for instance, at a Napier campus, the court would have to approve it, and I think the legislature as well. Um, and we'd be submitting plans and so on and so forth. You're going to have input from all the players. Um, and then you're going to look at, at the bonded indebtedness and, um, and then even looking at, at uh, the potential development of that bluff property. It's the last, it's prime real estate. I recognize that, but it's got to be done right. Yes, ma'am. May I ask you, is the city of Benton Harbor a court area? There used to be court there in City Hall. There might be for a district court or a municipal court, but I don't think it was designated as a full jurisdictional site. So. And, and, and just let me say this, when we bought the land at, on Napier, they said in 25 years, we can look at building, and it was 18 years ago. <coughs> mm -hmm. It's almost here. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just, I would have, I mean, it's, you know, you put those, those glasses on, the retrospectoscope glasses that give you perfect 2020 hindsight. If we were going to look at that in, as a project that was going to go ahead front burner, we probably would not have spent seven million yeah, down in jail receiving. Sure. Although the the other part of that discussion is we had some significant liability potential by not making those upgrades. So I guess we had to do it. Yeah, but um, we also had no idea that the ARPA funds were going to come this way. Sure, sure. Yeah, sure. no idea. Um, ARPA gives us a lot more reach. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, I'm not sure about the rest of the board, but I'll just speak my mind on this. Um, I'm of the Kenny Wenzel theory. If we don't have the money and we can't afford it, then we shouldn't do it. 
Um, and with that being said, I think, and John and I have talked about this before, and more John, is that whatever we do and whatever we use this one-time money for, we have to really watch ourselves because then we have the maintenance of whatever we do and that money is not coming again. Um, I look at what I've seen in here on some of the issues on repairs and I don't see that as a contractor, uh, as a previous contractor, as the county sending this out to contractors to bid. I think the majority of this can be done by our building and grounds through a maintenance. Uh, well, well, I'm just saying, if you've got flashing out at the animal control building that's leaking, it might be, it might be caulk. Uh, if you have flashing around the tops of doors and things like that, if the flashing doesn't have to be replaced. And that's, those are the things that I'm talking about. Major projects, window replacement, building new pavilions, I, I, I get that. That'd be all contracted out. But uh, I think it's the frugal approach because we don't have the slightest idea what the economy is going to be like um, and the volatility of our country. We just don't know. And I say we take the approach of the weight. Now, juvenile, we have to do something about juvenile. You know, we got to do something about that. We've got to take part of our money and we're going to have to demolish that facility and the hospital and things like that. So I could see some of that. But. Um, I would just like us to all think about the Kenny Wenzel financial. That's I'll just call it the Kenny Wenzel financial theory. Understood. Any other questions, comments, John? And then Michael. Uh, you know, I, I um, I'm as frugal as the next guy, and but but a lot of that uh, can't fall on our building and grounds. These are these are. Everything that we've gone over in these two sessions, these are big. These are big projects. This, these are, these are, these are big projects. Um, my biggest concern, well, one of one of my biggest concerns, is and Brian. I can direct the question right towards you. We, we could talk about John Wooden's words, <laughs> and you know, we're, we want to go fast but not hurry. And the fact of the matter is, though, is that we need to. There, there's a time frame that you're operating in, and there's a reality of what. The current economy that we're sitting in, as far as putting hands on those facilities yes. to get things done, and this is going to take some time. So, I guess I'd like to find out. We've heard from Tony. We get that you guys have obviously obviously been in in this at a greater depth than we have. But in order to accomplish this, you're going to have to get going on some projects, and decisions are going to have to be made relatively quickly. And so. Uh, Thoughts on, I guess, thoughts on on where we're at and and what next steps would be from your vantage. I, I guess I'd like to hear that at this point in time to, to move forward. I appreciate the question. So what I'm looking for is guidance on, can you all accept that we need to do some maintenance work on both the court and the jail? If the answer is yes, then what I do immediately is begin negotiating with Avon Marsh to go from the study to bid documents, to construction management. We need to get out to bid. We need to get these projects finalized. We need to get them into contract status so that we can have work underway to keep us within the ARPA timeline. What I need right now is, are you as a group okay with what we've listed out here? I believe it makes sense. I believe that they are worthwhile projects. They are good investments. They serve the public. If there is general concurrence that this makes sense, then what we immediately do is go from the study to contract development with Avon Marsh to do the, uh, the bidding and construction management. The only way that I can get that list done in the next couple of years is to go direct to them, to Tony and his team on, uh, on the, the contract development. Michael, then Mamie, then Julie. Yeah, as I look at it, and I, I see the top four projects up there are the 70% uh, of what's going to happen in the next 25 years. And I look at the jail, 
and we've spent seven million in there, but that's like in my business, that's like a sunk submarine. It's gone. It's already been done. We can't get it back, can't change. But where are we going to be in 25 years? I can't see us being in the same jail, in the same courthouse in 25 years, nor do I want Barron County to be in that same place. Maybe it is time to bite the bullet, look at moving that and making it modern, more safety for our, our, our associates and so that they have room to breathe uh, with those, even the South County building, it's, it's there. We do have room, but it's not, but people are all moving around and jumbled and doors are locked and you can't move from one place to the next. Uh, so look at what can we do now? This is a one-time effect with the ARPA monies. What can we do now where we want to be in 25 years? Not five years, not six years. Uh, this is a good thing to change the direction of Berrien County, where we would look like. And I think courthouse is important. The jail is very important of uh, what we do. And uh, so I, I want to look at going in the future and uh, look at changes if we can. Any other stuff, the other 25%, yeah, we need fixing and moving or... Uh, and I don't know why the truancy building, we don't use that land. Can we just sell that building maybe to somebody that may pay 50,000 for it? It's, you know, with that, it's that building to be a doctor's office? Yeah, in yeah. the front. Maybe it can be a doctor's office, a dentist's it's office again. Come on. It's, I don't know what's in the walls. I don't know either. Oh, that's right. It's got, it's got uh, mold. That's the best just yeah. man. But that's my opinion. Mamie and Julie and then Terry. You, you were next and then Julie and then Terry. Thank you. Um, when I look at this, I'm pleased to see this listed. I think there are things on here that we can do. And that's what I think. We've put a lot of money in the jail and the courthouse in the South County building, which I don't think has ever been used properly because there's always so many empty rooms in there. You need to figure out how to use it better. But the truancy building demolition or whatever you mean to do with it, animal control demolition, they talk about that's for, what do you call it, aid, you know, when you practice a fire or a nuclear war or disaster. We'll find some place to put the, put the animals. There are things on here that should be done and that we could afford to do. And you keep say, saying 30 million, but you mean to use some of it for broadband. So it's less than $30 million that you're talking about. So there are some things that can be done and then work on some things were so minor, like we're talking about the leaking and the caulking. We know we've got to do those. And that's what I'd like to see. And then work on these uh, big buildings. We do have the land, but work on the larger things because I've always thought that the inmates at Barry County Jail have a better view than I do. <laughs> but then you've got a city to deal with when you want to do something else with that land. They want it to be an arboretum from now on. So there are some things. That's all I know. Thank you, Julie. Um, I'm similar in agreement with what Mamie is saying. Um, I think we could all reach in a, a consensus to spend the ARPA money. I think there's been enough here that we could come up with exactly what we need to do to spend that money. And it might be some of the caulking. Some of my questions too revolve around what Mike said is, you know, do we have to do 7 million on the jail if we are gonna decide to move it, even follow that process? Maybe we do, maybe we don't, but I think I would like to see us perhaps go into some kind of work session, another um, committee of the whole, where we just talk about and discuss these projects, mm -hmm. because and if you're only asking for the, the public safety and court system, I could reach a, an agreement on this pretty quickly, I think, because I agree those things all need to be done. But when you come to some of those other lists, I think we really need to look at, should we move those buildings? Should we do the Silver Beach project versus put a million dollars into Silver Beach? Should we, you know, I think there's other discussions on the other lists, but I think we can spend the ARPA money now real quick. Yeah, from my perspective, if 
if the board is willing to sit down in some type of extended work session in a heartbeat, staff is ready and willing to do that. We are trying to figure out what questions the board has and trying to provide answers for you all. And we don't want to rush the board, but at the same time, we're just going to keep repeating. If we don't move up with a little bit greater speed, we potentially are sending money back to the federal government. Uh, Terry and Julie, we did just spend that seven, that project's done with the jail. No, I mean this but, seven. Okay, you're talking about the additional, yeah. okay. <laughs> All right, Terry, and then we gotta get to committees. Yes, thank you so much. And I appreciate all of the work that went into prepare this uh, presentation and all of the study that led up to it. Um, it's something that we need to, to have as a board to be able to know and kind of have the rest of the conversation. And there's another gentleman that's sitting in the room over here in the corner that we met with, I think in July of last year, as we were vetting through and discussing our strategic initiatives as it relates to ARPA funds. And I look at um, the identified capital spending needs. Um, I can agree that we need to put some maintenance money into this, and maybe it is ARPA funds, but there's another level of this because all of these projects that are being identified as a need have to also meet those specifications in the final rule for ARPA spending. And there is those other um, areas that we have earmarked um, in our discussions with Mr. Hedinger um, of where else we wanna dedicate some of those dollars. And we've already taken action to say broadband's a priority. So we have those applications that are out there. The initial recommendation for that was 6 million. Um, and so uh, we need to make certain that whatever we're doing, it's prioritized. I don't know if staff's been able to put all of these recommendations in a prioritization list. You know, obviously I think about my house, my roof is the most important, right? So I'm gonna be looking at those big projects and saying, okay, let's fix those. And if we can put ARPA dollars to that, just to kind of stop the bleeding, that may make some sense, but having that long-term strategizing um, and there's other dollars that are out there. Oh, there, yeah. right there, suggested projects for consideration. Sorry, we were- I needed to scroll down a little further. Is that what fine. it is? Mr. You... Chair, I know we're on the timeline or yes. on the clock here but this is where we are trying to, to steer this conversation to. This is the, uh, the document that I would ask you all to, to take a hard look at. We are trying to guess on what you all want to do. What I've said to, to Avon Marsh is, give me a range of 15 to 16 million, yeah. intentionally leaving cash available for Silver Beach, intentionally leaving cash available for EOC 911, intentionally leaving cash available for broadband. I don't want to step on toes, but I'm trying to guess what you all want to do. And if you all say, Brian, get this done, these projects will allow us to hit the, uh, the, the major maintenance items while still leaving cash available for the board to massage where you want the remaining of the roughly uh, $15 million uh, for those, those ARPA funds. And these don't fit under the guidelines? Yes. I'm not going to ask you to say yes today, but what I would ask you is spend the next week beating this list up. If this board was ready to say yes next week to this suggested priority list, that allows us to, to get things moving. It allows us to get projects queued up, contracts underway, bidding underway, and still reserves money for some of the projects that I know are aspirational projects that could have a, a long-term generation uh, impact. Silver Beach, I don't know if you're all are ready to say yes to it. EOC 911 relocation, I think you all are ready to say yes. Broadband, I know that there is active discussions on uh, grantable funds out to local units to help with construction. So what we've tried to do is take the crystal ball out and guess on what you as a group would say yes to, while also knowing that there's still a lot that needs to be massaged and worked out amongst the elected officials. Now, I'm, I'm sorry that we didn't get to this quicker, 
but this is the last part of the presentation that I really want you to take away. Spend the next few days looking through it, beat it up. And if you are ready to say yes to this, then we immediately move to resolution, we move to contracts and we get out to bid to spend down these dollars. Sure. And to, to that, and Tony, I set you right up again. Look at that. You guys are fantastic. Yes. I appreciate it. But to that point, we still have not allocated those dollars for the subgrants for broadband. So we've rolled out the application. There's been a recommendation, that bigger conversation of how the money for ARPA dollars should be allocated needs to happen and we need to approve it through a resolution mm -hmm. and so we we've got a lot of work to to get done but we can do it yeah just very quickly um i would be a i i it's a accuracy and this is going to be important but speed is still important that we we continue to move through so so brian's got time to to get through things and so if mr chairman you would like to try to organize a work session in short order so that this can be talked about very you know, quickly. If more is needed, then I'm a fan. So. Yeah. How about um, I if, a meeting on the if, if initially we task admin with reviewing this because it's building stuff, which is under admin, um, and within the week, give us a, an idea of what uh, the committee thinks, and then we can take it for full board discussion. And if we need to set aside an afternoon beyond that, we can do that. But let's start with admin and start today if we can. I know we've only got 20 minutes, but yes, ma'am. Um, I don't know if it's in some of the figures, but there are two places that need toilets on the toilet patrol police at Pawpaw, Bering County, Pawpaw River, Water Elite, and um, Galeen, Galeen River Park. Those are brand new. I mean, they're gorgeous. And you can't go, there's no bathroom. So we need that really bad. So I'm going to follow up with Commissioner Curran to figure out when to get Tony, Dirk, Robert in front of admin. Um, I will attempt to hit the accelerator and get this conversation started. I would ask the admin committee, if you all are willing to hang out after the board of commission meeting, I might be able to convince these guys to stay and start working through this list. Is that something you'd be comfortable with, sir? I can't stay. I can't. Stay. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. And I can. Okay. Okay, very good. Any public comments before we break? All right, hearing none. 